Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, and here is the Hurricane and Hurricane HD video blog for Saturday, July the 7th, 2012. Hope you're having a great weekend. The tropics, not an issue for the Atlantic Basin. This map is from the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch, part of the National Weather Service office, which is located at the same building as the National Hurricane Center, and it shows us an interesting look at the surface conditions across the tropical Atlantic and eastern to central Pacific and you can see the intertropical convergence zone here and it's also defined as the monsoon trough basically a convergence area where air comes together and sometimes it can be the focusing mechanism for the birth of tropical storms and hurricanes but not right now we do have a tropical wave located on it here another one out here and then a third one over Central America. And then we have a developing low, probably a depression any time now, in the Eastern Pacific. That's 97E, the investigation area. Here is Hurricane Daniel. And then you can see the monsoon trough just continues on out across the tropical Pacific. Looking at a satellite picture of what all of this looks like, you saw it on a map. Here is one of those tropical waves, a very high amplitude tropical wave. It's very large in scale in terms of its uh, height, if you will. Think about a wave in the ocean. You have little waves and you have really big waves. That's a terrible wave drawing, but you get the idea. This is a very high amplitude tropical wave in the easterlies, embedded in the easterly trade winds. And a little low-level circulation here, a little swirl, basically of nothing. And then we have another tropical wave over here in the Caribbean Sea generating some shower and thunderstorm activity along the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua. But nothing developing tropical storm or hurricane-wise in the Atlantic Basin for the foreseeable future. In the eastern Pacific, things remain very, very busy. Hurricane Daniel here, nice little pinhole eye right there, a very small, what we call a central dense overcast. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here to see if we can see that eye a little bit better in the CDO feature, the central dense overcast. There we go, very nice. A very small area of rising motion like a donut right around the center of circulation, what we call the central dense overcast. Uh, probably near a hundred mile per hour hurricane at this point with that little pinhole eye trying to bring in energy to itself from the warmer waters to the south, but alas it is going to self-destruct because it's also pulling uh, energy or with the lack thereof the circulation trying to from colder water on its north and west side and that'll extend all the way out towards Hawaii this is investigation area 97E you can see that S shape to it meaning that it's getting ready to develop probably into a depression and then a tropical storm and it's going to move off more in this direction over time none of these systems are going to be an impact on Mexico or Central America. The forecast track, as I zoom back out for Daniel, it is moving generally west-northwest and it'll weaken over those cooler waters of the Pacific Ocean. There's Hawaii, but no worries, it will not bring anything appreciable to Hawaii, maybe a low cloud swirl. One of the reasons, and really the reason, this is the water temperature profile. 26 degrees Celsius is the threshold to sustain most tropical cyclones, especially those that are born in the tropics like Daniel was. And Hawaii is sitting just north of that 26 degrees Celsius line right there. Daniel forecast to pass out of that warm water area and into cooler, more stable, a cooler, more stable environment, mainly because of that colder water. This is a great graphic from the National Hurricane Center. You can really see the cold water that spills down on the west part of North America, the western side of the continent, and then the strong trade winds out here blow the warm water generally off from east to west, and it's when those trade winds relax and the warm water is able to more or less stagnate, which is not really what it does, you get an El Nino event, and we'll talk about that more on Monday's update. But overall, the tropics, especially in the Atlantic, not looking bad at all, which is very typical for this time of year. July, the early part of July, is usually a very slow period in the tropics. 
And even in the Eastern Pacific with those two systems, yes, there's something to track, but no, there's nothing to worry about in terms of impact to land. Have yourselves a great rest of your Saturday. I'll be back tomorrow for another quick look at the tropics. Probably going to be talking about much of the same, just shifting everything a day later. That's how it is this time of year. Again, I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, my website. Always glad to provide these video blogs for Hurricane and Hurricane HD, and we'll do it again tomorrow.